One problem that this car has had from the start is that it leaks oil out of the catch can. And it took me a while to figure out why it was actually leaking oil out of the catch can until I saw another car with the same exact catch can setup that I do have. It has the GK Tech over the um, radiator catch can. It goes right over top of the fan shroud. The previous owner that had it modified this catch can and they put a filter on the end of it, which you can see right there. They put a filter on the end of it so that it could breathe the atmosphere but I didn't know that they modified it and put that filter on. I kind of honestly just thought it was the way that it came from the manufacturer. I was going to say OEM, but it's not OEM. Um, but the way that that filter works is it allows all that pressure that builds up into the catch can. It allows the air to escape and actually to, for it to breathe, which is a smart way to modify this catch can. The only thing is, is that since the catch can is horizontal and this is a drift car, if it gets any oil inside the catch can and then you sling the car or go around a corner too fast, all that oil is going to slosh and it comes right out of the filter. So for the past few months, I've been having an oil problem where it'll leak right here and it'll leak down this fan shroud. It's just like a little bit of oil. I was driving with my friend Trevor everybody knows Trevor if you don't know Trevor he has his own YouTube channel I'll link it down below but I was driving with Trevor and we went around a corner really really hard oil sloshed came out of the filter wind came and pushed it because the hood isn't off it went into the fan and the fan slung it all over the windshield it scared the absolute shit out of us because the oil just covered the windshield we were like oh my god we just blew it the engine blew we didn't know what the fuck happened but all it was was oil coming out of this filter so at that moment i thought i need to change this catch can set up so i ended up buying the exact same catch can without the filter on the end and the way that i'm going to make it work is i'm going to have it come up from here through the crankshaft ventilation and instead of it being just a 90 degree elbow and using both of these inlets i'm going to have it t right here so it comes up it comes through here still comes out of here and only goes into one inlet so that this inlet can act as a breather of sorts and it will actually breathe out that way instead of having the filter. You can see that, that is the T. So the goal is, is to put this in that outline. So I got a female end and then two male ends on this side because I couldn't find one female with a T with two hose barbs. I then had to get two males, then two females that went to hose barbs. So that looks a lot more complicated than it really is, but it's gonna T up from the crankcase, come across, come out of the valve cover and into the catch can. I'll cut it about right there. here it's as simple as I can get it if I want to do it better then the next best thing to do would be to come from here and go pre turbo into the um, intake which there's a spot right there that I could go to if I really wanted to Okay, now something that is just for myself. Not something that I necessarily have to do, but I want to do it. Oh, I love this wheel. Now I gotta take this hub off. 
because it's pretty deep if you can tell. So I got an NRG short hub, which is going to be a lot shorter because I tried to put a quick release on this and it brought the steering wheel out to like here. So short hub and quick release so I can interchange the steering wheels. I can put my vertex in here if I wanted to. Let's see if I can break this loose. Okay, it's <laughs> probably not good. <laughs> that is probably not good, okay. That was way too loose. Uh. Uh. Aha! Everybody is looking for a, I'm pretty sure this is a works bell hub. Anyways, I don't need it. I don't need this boss hub. But I'm gonna put this short hub back on. Easy peasy. Okay. <sighs> One of my favorite things to modify on cars is steering wheels. Because if I want to put this, since I'm doing the quick release, if I wanted to, I could put this um, hold fast in my GTO and then take the vertex out of there and put it in here. That was my favorite thing. So I have the option of driving with any steering wheel that I want. Simple, easy mod, but I love doing this. I'm a steering wheel whore. I do not need another vertex, but I want one so bad. <laughs> That's what I love. <laughs> Hold fast out. Oh, caught it. Vertex in. <laughs> I love that. So now I can drive with my vertex if I wanted to. That's such a simple, simple mod, but it makes it cool that I can exchange the steering wheels now. Because, like I said, I am a whore for steering wheels. One of my favorite things, and honestly, I would consider this to be the best thing about modifying cars, is finding good deals online. No matter what it is, like the seats that I got in the GTO, the status seats, I got those for half the price of what they would actually go for. The rotiforms that are on the GTO, I got those for so much cheaper than what I would have gotten them if I ordered them straight from rotiform. Finding used deals is such a good feeling. And even on the small things, because this is like a $30 piece. Of thing. This is like a $30 mod, but I got it for 15 bucks, so I still got it for half price. But I was just on Facebook Marketplace, and I saw it, and I was like, I want it. It was $15. Likewise, drift button. Super simple, easy install, but we're gonna do it just right now. And then this one goes on <laughs> that was a literally take two second install but I think that's cool right there I want to get a shift knob for this thing too I'm just trying to do like an interior overhaul I'm trying to make this car my own because of course I bought it already with all the body kit and stuff on it but I still want to make this car my own. So that's why I've been trying to sell parts off of it or trying to find little parts that I want to make it mine. I've been trying to decide. I did the catch can today, did the steering wheel today, did the little drift button today. I know that it's not a lot, but I've been on a roll. So I'm trying to decide if I actually want to change the seats out now. Let's just go ahead and do it. Let's do it. Okay, if I'm being honest, this kind of pains me to do this because I don't want to recycle parts, but at the same time, this is a passenger seat and it would be such a better driver's seat in that car. So I am going to steal it out of this. I hate to say it, but I am. Just for the time being until I get a set of seats for that car.
all these mods today, especially the interior mods, it's one of my favorite things to do because it's also the simplest. It's all just bolt, plug and play pretty much, but it makes a world of difference because it's actually how you drive the car. Having a proper seat in this car is gonna make so much difference. Steering wheel situation, not really, but at the same time, because it's gonna be in a bucket seat, I'm gonna have to have the quick release to get in and out of the car. So that's pretty cool. And I gotta unplug that. Now, that should just bolt right in. Why? Okay. What if I took the seat off, got the bracket set, and then put the seat back in? That would probably be the smartest decision. God bless. All right. Okay, so it's a new day. Yesterday, I did some small things. I finished the catch can setup, which you saw in the video. I put the quick release on, just put the freaking first button in. Just small things. And then I wanted to put the seat from the GTO in here. But I started having complications because I was trying to use the sliders. And I realized that these are just gonna be fixed, fixed position seats, which is something that I'm gonna have to get used to or that other people are gonna have to get used to because the seat is gonna be sat for me. But when I was trying to put the seat in, the distance between this rail and this rail was too far apart and the seat would literally just sit down in the middle of it. I've been trying to figure out a solution to this and what I came up with was putting the stock seat belt in against this bolt down here so that it would push the track farther out so that way I now have the seat able to sit down on this. I still need to sit in the seat on here and mark it in my seating position and then drill out the holes, but it should be a pretty easy install. I like my seat to sit really far back. I like it to lean. I don't know how else to explain that. Some people have their seat to where it's flat, to where their legs just extend out to the pedals. But I kind of like having that like leaned where I still have that bend in my knees. So in order to do that, you raise the front all the way up on the adjusters and then you lower the rear as far back as it'll go. So you get that lean to it. I honestly don't know what is the best and what's recommended by professionals. I have no idea. That's how I've driven the GTO with these seats for the past two years. So that's just what I'm comfortable to. I'm gonna test fit it in the car to see if it hits anything. And then if it doesn't, I'll mark the spots, drill out holes for it, and should be good to go. Okay, and so this is what I was talking about. Because these brackets that are connected to the seat are supposed to sit on here. And that's where the holes are supposed to be. You can either use these pre-drilled holes that they already have up. So you'd either use the back one and then drill the front one, or use the front one if you're really short and then drill the back one. But, leaving the back one, I'm six foot two, so I have to move the seat even farther back. The seat is on here, and the adjuster, I have it slid all the way over. But even with it being all the way over, it's still barely, you can see this, sitting on this track. So I was gonna put another bolt in there to hold it, but I can't even get these holes to line up to put a bolt in there. So that's one thing I'm not too happy about with these seat brackets, but it'll still work. I just gotta drill the holes out. That's a lot better for my seating position. And then you can see that I have a ton of headroom for a helmet. I like how it's leaning back farther. It doesn't make me feel like super uptight. I'm also happy that I figured out to put that seat belt in so it pushes that bracket farther out. It's still barely touching it, but it, it'll be enough with a strong, I'll put a really good grade strong bolt in there and it should be good. For it to have been a better version, I would have gotten the actual like boxed setup of the um, seat bracket for the S13, but I wanted a low down seat 
So in order to get that, I had to get the individual brackets for each side, so that way the seat can sit down in between them. And it is, it is, I'm literally sitting practically like on the floor. <laughs> Nobody here to help me? I'll put my seat down with duct tape. <laughs> This is stupid. Oh, you piece of shit. Hold my seat. Hold my seat. So I can mark this with the marker on the other side. Thank you. All right. Let's drill some holes. <laughs> It doesn't really matter, but since I have scratched them up trying to place the seats and stuff, and now I know that they're going to be sitting in these holes, and just to like take away the wear marks from the drill, I'm just going to take a quick, quick coat of black paint just to clean them up. Something else to do, just to take that little bit of extra time, is to clean the car where you're going to put the seat because you don't know the next time that the seat's gonna be out. Let's go ahead and back to me. Okay, it's finally in. It's finally in and it is very sturdy shakes the entire car. Perfect seating placement. My extended leg takes the clutch all the way in. Good seating spot. That was the hardest seat I've ever put in a car before ever. Because these brackets do not line up at all. It took me forever to figure out how to do it. One of the reasons that I had so much trouble with this is because I like the seat, like I said earlier, to sit really far back and lean. On this side, it's all the way down in the back and all the way up in the front, so it leans. But on this side, you can't do that. It will be twisted, so the brackets won't allow it. But on this side, it's all the way up in the front, and in the back on this one, it's on the middle. So the seat is kind of like cocked. I can kind of feel it in the seat too. Uh, fuck it, whatever. I'm not gonna notice it, but I made it work. I don't really recommend planted technology seat brackets. Spend the money, get a street faction, get a bride. Yeah, I don't recommend these guys. Oh, I'm definitely gonna get you wrecking. Shut up!